qualification or some type of report other than a uh, standard unqualified report. Auditor not independent happens when auditor has some uh, form of prohibited relationship with the entity. So ind independence is going to be a key component when we're thinking about putting this this items together, the audit together. And it needs to be independent specifically uh, in terms of, of the, the relationship of the auditor and the client. In other words, independence isn't just something typically that will be uh, independence in the way we conduct the audit. We also want to have appearance of independent because remember that the audit is is geared towards an independent third party. So if someone has some relation with someone in the in the organization that's significant, uh, even if they even if they conducted the audit in an independent fashion, the the appearance is not uh, independent. So that could uh, cause some type of difference or some types of qualification. Independence is kind of a, is a big deal uh, within the auditing process. So then what would we do about it? What would happen if there was a scope limitation? Well, if there's a scope limitation, we'd have a qualified opinion or some a disclaimer of opinion, right? If it was a, if it was a scope limitation, we could say, hey, there's just one piece that we couldn't audit. And therefore, we're going to have this qualification that we couldn't audit that one piece and, and tell the reader that. However, if it's a large piece, if it's very significant, then we're just going to have to say, hey, we couldn't, we couldn't complete the audit to our satisfaction. Therefore, we have to issue a disclaimer opinion given the scope limitation. Not in conformity with generally accepted accounting and principles, we would have a qualified opinion or an adverse opinion. So again, it depends on, on the degree here. If, if there's one thing that wasn't in conformity with generally accepted accounting principles, then we could say, hey, management recorded it this way possibly, and maybe they have some reason for doing that. Although we believe it's a deviation from generally accepted accounting principles, we may say, hey, this component is a deviation from generally accepted accounting principles, we believe, and the rest of the financial statements according to our testing is in conformity with financial accounting principles. We might have something like that. Or if there's a if there's a significant deviation, of course, we can't give an opinion that the financial statements and in like that's pervasive through the through the through the financial statements. We can't give an opinion that the, the financial statements are in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles when they are not, and therefore would have to issue an adverse opinion which is basically like the worst type of opinion. Auditor not independent. If the auditor is not independent, then we'd have to have a disclaimer of opinion because the auditor can't basically give an opinion if they don't have that independence factor. So here's an example, just, just an example of how the terminology would look on the disclaimer. Remember, what you want is basically to memorize the qualified audit report and then you can kind of think through what would happen in some of these other types of, of deviations from that. In place of an opinion section, the auditor's report includes the section titles disclaimer of opinion on the financial statements, followed by the name of the companies whose financial statements the auditor was engaged to audit and a statement identifying each financial statement that the auditor was engaged to audit. This is often followed by a basis for disclaimer of opinion section in place of a basis for opinion section. So an example might be something like this. Disclaimer of opinion on the financial statements. We were engaged to audit the accompanying balance sheet of the company as of the date and related statements of income and cash flows. As described in the following paragraph, because the company did not take physical inventory and were not able to apply other auditing procedures to satisfy ourselves as to inventory quantities and the cost of property and equipment, we were not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to provide a basis for an audit opinion on the financial statements and we do not express an opinion on these financial statements so notice we're just basically saying you know we were engaged we have this problem that happened we're not able to give an opinion on the financial statements because of it the company did not make a count of physical inventory in the year stated in the accompanying financial statements at 28 million as of the date Further, uh, evidence supporting the cost of property and equipment acquired prior to date is no longer available. The company's records do not permit the uh, application of other auditing procedures to inventories or property plant and equipment. Basis for disclaimer of opinion. These financial statements are the responsibility of companies' managements. We are a public accounting firm registered with the Company Accounting Oversight Board, United States PCAOB, and are required to be independent with respect to the company in accordance with the U.S. 
securities laws, and the applicable rules and regulations of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the PCAOB. Here's an example of a type of deviations or type of alterations of, of the standard unqualified report that may happen if there's a scope limitation. So now we have a qualification, qualified report, as opposed to unqualified. Again, think about the unqualified report and then think about the, the deviation that would happen for the qualification. Standard wording for the opinion paragraph, except that a reference to the scope limitation is made. Example, in our opinion, except for the effects of such adjustments, if any, as might have been determined to be necessary uh, had we been able to examine evidence regarding the foreign affiliate uh, and earnings, the financial statement present fairly in all material respects, and so on and so forth. So uh, once again, we have in our opinion, and then this qualification, given the fact that we have a scope limitation, we couldn't get to this information and therefore couldn't audit it what we did audit this is my paraphrasing of this by the way <laughs> what we did audit looks like it's in conformity uh, we believe we have evidence to conf to back up our assumption that it is in conformity with generally accepted accounting principles we weren't able to get the evidence with regards to this item and then a paragraph following the opinion paragraph will describe the basis for departure from the unqualified opinion we were unable to obtain an audited financial statement supporting the company's investments in foreign affiliates stated at 10 million at date or its equity in earnings of that affiliate of 1 million, which is included in net income for the years then ended as described in note seven to the financial statements. So obviously we'll refer to the note. The note will give more information on this, but it's significant enough for us to put it in the audit report here uh, we were also not able to satisfy ourselves as to the carrying value of the investments in the foreign affiliate or the equity in its earnings by other auditing procedures